How's it going everyone, it's me Vivi and welcome back to the channel. So Vivi, tell us, what is it this time? What has piqued your interest this time? Has Insomniac Games announced a new Ratchet & Clank game? No, but I do think it's possible after Spider-Man PS4 gets released. Oh, sorry, Marvel's Spider-Man. Has Sly Cooper 5 been confirmed? No, but that would have been awesome, right? But I do feel like the story of Sly Cooper is going to get a little something in the future. Maybe a book, I don't know, but apart from the TV show, I do think something's gonna happen eventually. I still have hopes. Talking about Sly Cooper 5, sorry I'm going off topic here, I know you read the title of the video, I thought making a video on this small subject is not worth it, so I just want to throw it into this video quick quick. Someone sent me this on Twitter, they DM'd Sucker Punch. Sly 5, they replied, my lips are sealed. This is absolutely hilarious, but hold on dude, is this photoshopped? I don't think so. I do believe this. What's hilarious about this is that Sucker Punch refused uses to use the word no. It is highly speculated that they are not working on Sly Cooper 5, they are working on a new IP. Well we believe. Sony never outright came out and said, oh, they're working on a new IP. All we know so far is that Scott Road and Shuhei Yoshida have played the game and think it's fun. Us fans just believe that Sucker Punch has moved on. Oh and by the way, if you see this reply on the article talking about the 20th anniversary of Sucker Punch, it's just coincidental. Sucker Punch replying to a comment which mentions Sly Cooper. It's top comment. They replied to that comment so people easily see it. And they said no, if you're trying to look for answers in the comments, stop scrolling. We're not gonna reveal our secret project. Anyways, that's about it when it comes to Sly Cooper. Back to the topic of this video. You read the title. It has to do with the writer of the future saga and onwards, TJ Fixman himself. Remember when I talked about how the Ratchet and Clank movie had a draft by TJ Fixman and then it moved on to Kevin Monroe and Gary Swallow. Let me give you a recap. Fixman felt like his fingerprints were still in the film. Several jokes as well. The plot points they did feel similar. It had like the same bones. The overall humor, however, that was the biggest change according to Fixman. He had left two years before the movie was complete and he said that all credit goes to Kevin Monroe and the team. Around that time his contract was about to expire so he thought okay Okay, let's just let Kevin Monroe and the team handle this, why not? He had moved on to other projects. Back in August 2016, people even wondered if the original script of the film would see the light of day. Guess what? Today, October 5th, 2017, Mr. Fixman revealed some parts of the original script. That is awesome. And I gotta say, we can already spot some differences. To be completely honest with you guys, when I first read this script on Twitter, I thought of Tools of Destruction because he started writing beginning from Tools of Destruction, and he only used hashtag Ratchet. I was like, okay, is he referring to the Ratchet and Clank movie script? I decided to tweet at him and he replied and said it's the movie. So for those of you who are wondering, maybe this could be the script of the PS4 game, he did write that game, so no, it's the movie, alright? Let's go over the interesting points. Ratchet swings Clank onto his back. That's one. That gives me the feeling that Ratchet and Clank's friendship was originally going to be the premise of the film. I could be mistaken. The plumber. <laughs> Ratchet calls him Ted, and Clank just believes him. And that was probably for fan service, right? The plumber has appeared I don't know how many times, he's hilarious, appearing out of nowhere, always answering these questions, giving hints, just like that. They put the plumber in just to, you know, he's the joke of the series. Well actually, spoilers by the way, the plumber is shown after the credits of the film. So seeing as how he was originally supposed to have a scene in the movie, I think it would have been better. Maybe Ted was a reference to Ted Price, who knows, but look, the plumber didn't need this huge scene in the movie. Showing him briefly could have been enough, so I don't know why they decided to take him out. I'm going by memory here by the way, I don't remember seeing the plumber. If he was in the film, just mention it, but I doubt it. Now yes, technically he was in the film, but after the credits, which many people probably had no idea about. You see, if he was in the film, people would have have seen him. Some people just leave the theater once the movie is over. And looking at this script, he was shown briefly as Ratchet's fan who's apparently called Ted. As for Exposition Bot 5000, Fixman wanted Morgan Freeman to voice the character. And when he said this on Twitter, I imagined his voice, and now I can't unhear it. It is funny. Seeing as how they hired a bunch of known celebrities, Morgan Freeman, maybe it wouldn't have been so hard, I don't know. But anyways, 
Fixman also posted another part of the script, which includes the cut character, Stig, who was supposed to be Alaris's love interest, another member of the Galactic Rangers. The team thought the movie would have been too long, so they had to cut him out. And I mean, the film was 90 minutes. Putting way too many characters in that time frame, you're going to have to think about how to develop all the characters. Now of course, some characters can appear briefly, but the Galactic Rangers, they're pretty much the main cast, so they would have to devote enough screen time to all those characters. So in a way, you have to understand why they had to cut out a character. If of course the movie was longer than 90 minutes, they could have kept Stig in. So if they removed Stig, something tells me that they decided to go with Clank and Alaris. If Stig was still part of the script, then I feel like we would have seen more moments with Ratchet and Clank, seeing how they developed their friendship. Another interesting thing, the Bio-Obliterator being used for medical emergencies. That's quite an awesome idea, actually. I'm assuming Nefarious invented such technology, seeing as how he used to be part of the team. And in Up Your Arsenal, he used a giant Bio-Obliterator to turn everyone, the Terranoids, into robots. And then he said, if it isn't my protege, and there's also the broom closet. I think these are the elements Fixman was talking about, how there were some similarities to the plot. Now, a scene like this with Brax injured, this to me sounds like the Galactic Rangers were going to have a few serious moments. Out of all the Galactic Rangers, I feel like Alaris had the most amount of screen time. Sometimes I wish the movie was longer. Give it more time. Explore the Galactic Rangers a bit more. I mean, the game. That's where it disappointed people. People. The Galactic Rangers were just there. They were just there. They could have explored those characters a lot deeper in the game, but it is what it is. Also, notice how Clank was with Ratchet on the other side of the observation room. Now, obviously, Alaris was operating on Brax, but to me, it feels like the movie was going to focus on Ratchet and Clank, them being together all the time. And I'm assuming Stig was going to work with Alaris behind the computer. And TJ Fixman, he wrote the future saga. He knows these characters. I'm thinking his intention was to focus on these two characters, mainly. I mean, the title says Ratchet and Clank, not Ratchet and Quark. But hey, Fixman said that the movie had the same bones and plot points, so I might be defending this guy way too much. What do you guys think? Do you feel like Ratchet and Clank were going to be the focus of the film? Tell me what you think in the comment section. Now, Fixman is probably going to post more of these on his Twitter account, so I will leave the link in the description below. Now on a different note, ESC Toy, the ones bringing us these figures, which we don't know what they look like completely still, they also teased plushies. We can see them fully, of course, as usual. And they said we may receive these by December. It's not official yet, but I'm going to say it now. I am not a fan of the eyes. What is up with the eyes? I don't know. Just me? But anyways, I just wanted to throw this into the video as well. But as always guys, if you have any other questions, thoughts, anything like that, leave everything in the comment section below. And as always, I've been Vivi and thank you so much for watching.